All right, it's 10 a.m. on the dot. All right, Rocky Wallace is our presenter today, and the title is The Core Values of Growing Effective Community Schools. Rocky comes um, came to Campbellsville University in the fall of 2018 and developed CU Graduate Education Leadership Program. He previously served at Moorhead State and Asbury in a similar capacity, former school principal of a Kentucky and U.S. Blue Ribbon School, served in the highly skilled educator leadership program at KDE and as a director of instructional support and adult education. Um, he has co-authored, edited, and co-edited 12 books with Rowan and Littlefield on the theme of servant leadership and school improvement. Awesome. Take okay, thank you. Away. Thank you, Brooke. It's always a joy to be a part of Ed Camp. Uh, this is a huge statewide conference and since it's gone virtual it seems like even more participants so i'm honored to be a part of it every year <clears throat> Brooke, do you have my slide deck where you can pull it up or not i don't okay all right i have another presentation at noon and i just noticed this morning i have that one loaded but not the slide deck but that's okay this is a presentation that we can talk through and get your feedback might even be better without a slide deck I see Rendy from Fallsburg in here with us. Um, I see um, Dana Crawford. I've worked with her. I see Todd Davis. I've worked with him. I see Josh Gumpton. I've worked with Josh. So core values and how it makes a more effective school. Uh, the best way I can describe core values, and you probably have these in your building either as implicit for sure, no way you could be around that, and also explicit. Um, a wonderful exercise with staff is to spend quite a bit of time, <clears throat> at least three or four hours, maybe in two or three different after school sessions or over the summer, to have a conversation on core values and what are our agreed core values. Uh, so many times uh, in a school culture, uh, you will have a very scattered vision. You'll have some folks who say this is more important, other folks who say that's more important. You can have uh, little pockets of power or um, pockets of folks feeling they're going to go their own way. Todd Whitaker talked about that some earlier this morning. Um, so identifying core values, there she pulled it up for me. That is good. Thank you, ma'am. Now, if you can give me the uh, um, give me the rights to control the slide deck. I don't think I I don't think I have that kind of cool power. Okay. I have like want... semi power. So do you want me to do you want yeah. me to screen share or do you just want to talk? Which would be easier for you? If you can screen share and then just when I say move a slide, move it, that'd be great. That's that's thank you, Brooke. So I'll just ask the group real quickly. Anyone want to give an example of you have been in a school where the core values the non-negotiables, the priorities, what you're really about at the end of the day, what you would tell parents if they are visiting your school and scouting your school for their kids to possibly go there. Does someone want to share in the chat or either just turn your mic on? What would be an example that you've experienced that has made a huge difference in your school? Dr. Wallace, we just always kind of had a cute little mission statement, and it said something like, every day we learn and play together to be a success tomorrow, and the kids really took to it really well, and the parents, they like to hear it. Every time we met for any kind of uh, meeting or even anything with the school-wide, we always said that at the beginning, and so it kind of caught on pretty good, and it was a really good way to kind of spread what our mission and core values were. Great example. Thank you for sharing that, Steve. Um, anyone else? 
before we get rolling with some examples on the slides. Well, to show you how important core values are, I remember Stu Silberman, um, former superintendent of Fayette County Schools, and later he was the director of the Pritcher Committee and uh, had a stellar career, and Stu really was focused on core values. Uh, any of you who remember from a few years ago what was Fayette County's tag, um, what was their brand, it was it's all about kids. And other districts actually have in schools have made that their their tag or their brand. But I talked to a colleague of mine, a teacher in Fayette County, when Stu first came to Fayette County Schools, and uh, just by his presence and what he was about, they had had several uh, superintendents in a brief period of time. So even though maybe every one of those folks were strong leaders, that's hard on a school or a district to have too much turnover over. A short amount of time. It's typically hard on an organization. So I asked her, well, how's Stu doing? And she said, you can tell a difference across the district in a positive way. And he's just been here a few weeks. So his core values, what he was about was rubbing off in a big way all across a large district like Fayette County. You see John, Math, John Maxwell's quote here, your core values are the deeply held beliefs that authentically describe your soul. So many or all of you probably are uh, fans of John Maxwell, wonderful leadership guru and author. He's been in Kentucky several times, always draws a big crowd. And he even speaks about it cuts to your soul. So as an individual or as a corporate group, as a school, uh, that's a great way to describe it. What's your soul really about as a, as a school? Okay, next slide. So we all talk about this all the time, don't we? Priorities are students first, but notice underneath students, the larger block, the stuff, and the stuff can really get in a way, in the way of what's best for kids in a classroom, on a principal's schedule, in school council meetings and faculty meetings. Uh, sure, we have to talk about the nuts and bolts and the processes and and um, various things that are on the calendar and, and various things that are not working well. But if uh, if a school principal, if a classroom teacher is so distracted by all the other stuff, then those who suffer are the students because they have less attention from the teacher. And then the teachers suffer if the principal's that way because the teachers and staff have less needed attention and support from the principal. So sometimes a great idea for a principal or for a classroom teacher to do would be the next three days, everything's off the calendar. It's just gonna be what I went into this profession for. I'm just gonna be with the kids teaching and we're gonna do a lot of innovative things and creative things. And for a principal saying, I'm wiping my slate clear as much as I can, I'm just going to be around the building at lunch with the kids, at recess with the kids, ball games after school with the kids, mingling with teachers, uh, checking in with them. The more we do that, our core values become very much more centered and we don't become this bureaucracy that in many ways, a lot of people say can be so dysfunctional because we've piled so much stuff uh, that gets in the way of teachers working with kids effectively and school leaders supporting their staff effectively. Next slide. So you've seen graphs like this in your graduate school classes and maybe even in PD in your district, but for a school to be driven by strong core values, everyone in the building needs to move from that big red zone on top that you see on your screen to on the bottom, what is more healthy, from isolated to community focused, from self to teamwork, from winning all the time uh, for yourself to this is win-win for everybody. Uh, this explosive growth that happens when we're innovative and creative and we realize one, 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 one plus one is not always two uh, in an innovative, creative environment. And then instead of being so driven by uh, the product mentality, like our students are on an assembly line, 
we're very much driven by uh, what does a great school look like and what should it look like in this classroom? Next slide. So that creates new energy and new life. This is Cumberland Falls. Maybe all of you have been there. Um, something about being around fresh water when my wife and I go on our summer vacations. I love to be around water wherever it's at. Um, so zeroing in on healthy core values will give your school such a boost, such a freedom especially if it's articulated from day one, especially articulated to your new staff that you bring on board. If you have three to five core values that you have uh, articulated and agreed upon, and then the other intrinsic core values. Again, what's best for kids? What's best for the staff? What's best for the community? What's best for parents? If everyone's on the same page doing that, uh, you're gonna have a powerful, effective school model. Next slide. So shepherding, this, I have to pull my computer up close. This is from Kim Blanchard, another servant leadership guru, along with Maxwell, two of the best. The key to successful leadership today is influence, not authority. So what a wonderful core value for a school leader that I'm going to uh, pour into and invest in my people, uh, not boss and lord over them. You see on the right, a picture of my oldest daughter, Lauren, who lives in Durango, Colorado. I was just on a text with her a few minutes ago. And uh, when she was a little girl, I uh, started showing her how to play golf. And over the years, one of the funnest things we do, I'll go and actually, I don't play golf anymore. I'll actually drive the golf cart and just uh, enjoy being out on the golf course with her. And now as an adult, although she still doesn't keep score, <laughs> she is a pretty good golfer, has a real good swing, enjoys the game, her and her husband go golfing. And um, if I would have bossed her, if I would have overcoached her when she was 10 years old, or 12 years old, when we first started going uh, to play nine holes of golf every now and then, she would have not ever had a thirst for the game. Because I know Lauren, she's very independent. She and would not have wanted one more pressure item on her calendar to go golfing with dad. So a big piece on what Todd Whitaker talked about this morning, same way with teachers in the classroom, is the coaching and the mentoring should not be bossing and belittling and making folks nervous. Who wants another nervous item on their agenda? Yes, we hold each other accountable, but there is so much of a more shepherding way to help others grow. Next slide. Real quickly, a slide from my trail camera back in the woods behind our house. This um, buck, just like he posed for me, although I wasn't there when that picture was taken, that was early morning, it looks like. And can you see his voice? Can you see that buck's voice? I do. Unbridled. Um, not complicated. His life is just about who he is. Stephen Covey, his follow-up book to The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and Covey is number three, Blanchard, Maxwell, and Stephen Covey. In my mind over the years, studying and researching and reading about leadership, those three are the three top gurus who made the biggest influence on how we study and practice leadership all over the world. But his book, The Eighth Habit, basically in summary, what he says is find your voice and then spend the rest of your life helping others to find their voice. If you're helping students and staff to find their voice, they're gonna feel more unbridled. They're gonna feel more free, will be much more creative and innovative, much more relationship driven. They will want to be in your building every day. Next slide. So here is a graphic I just pulled off the internet as an example. This is where it gets down to the nitty gritty. Why is this student so alone? And has the school helped him to identify his passion? Is it a core value in your building that it's not just about test scores, although yes, accountability is important. It's not just about the master schedule. It's not just about the adults getting their way all the time in terms of inconveniences that are required when we really dig down deep and work with each student individually to identify uh, what makes them tick. Many times, uh, and by the way, you folks in P12, 
I'm in higher ed now, but spent 20 some years in P12. Uh, you're doing a better job than ever with creating the extra clubs, the extracurricular activities, sports and other types of extracurricular activities and co-curricular. Uh, and teachers who do this will tell you this connects you with your kids better than anything you can do. Same way with the principal with staff. If you want a staff person to pay more attention to you, find out about that staff person's hobbies and family and where their kids are at in school. Um, you get to know their personality more than just we're on the assembly line today. Everybody produce, 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 and then go home. So with students, those who are the lost boys and the lost girls, somehow not even one person in the building has connected with them to where that person, that student can say, I can go to him or go to her because he connects with me. She connects with me. They are interested in my hobbies. They know the rough home life I have. They have stayed after school for extra mentoring. They have advised me to get involved in this club or this sport and they come to my games makes all the difference. The outliers are the ones that we spend so much time trying to figure out. And a lot of times it's as simple as the relationship piece. Next slide. Does your school feel like home? This is Denise is my home outside of Midway, uh, stone log cabin style, stone logs. Uh, nothing like after a long day, I'll be down in uh, Garrett County this evening with a cohort that uh, we're working with. Um, I'll enjoy being down there, but when I drive in the driveway and come in the front door, no place like home. Does your school feel like a safe sanctuary to your students and the staff who work there? If it does, the staff will stay there. If it doesn't, your staff will roll out year after year after year, you will lose people and students will be transferred to other schools or at least being promoted to the next school. Very unfulfilled. A lot of wasted time in your building. Next slide. Does your school have a family atmosphere? Small groups, school within a school, wing of the building, classroom, ball teams, band, music program, art club. There's lots of different ways for students to experience that family atmosphere. Uh, so there's no place like home and home away from home for students and for staff should be the school. It should not be some, some entity that they dread coming to every morning. And that family atmosphere, uh, teachers do a great job on this. Uh, by the time they've had the kids for a couple of weeks, typically, especially elementary does a great job with this. The homeroom does feel like a family atmosphere. Harder for high school teachers to create that type of an environment when you have 30 kids times five, 150 kids every day or 100 kids every day. But there are still ways to do it. Learning names, making sure we do that. That should be automatic on everybody's growth plan every year. And then um, building a family atmosphere. Schools who celebrate a lot understand this. They get it. Schools who announce on the intercom accomplishments that staff have had and students have had, even though it wasn't directly related to the school. Let's say a staff person finishes their master's. That's a big celebration. That calls for a party at the next teacher's meeting. Uh, let's say a student um, over the summer wins a gymnastics competition. That should be announced to the rest of the student body. That should be celebrated, just like we do with our families when we gather together. Next slide. So what are the cornerstones for any school or any person who works in a school? Well, I put an example of church here because that's one of the cornerstones in my life. So what are the cornerstones for your school? Hopefully it will be family. Hopefully it will be high student achievement. Hopefully it will be uh, staff fulfilled at work and ongoing staff development. Uh, hopefully it will be core values that are character ed driven. Uh, so that students are being prepared to go back out into society uh, when they are grown and invest back into this uh, wonderful, privileged culture here in the U.S. that we all enjoy. Next slide. The reason I said we all enjoy, I read a stat the other day that if you make $32,000 a year here in the U.S., uh, you're in the like the top uh, 4% or 1% of those who have any income all around the world. 
So sometimes we tend to, as Todd Whitaker mentioned this morning, we tend to focus on, oh, we're horrible. What are we not doing well? I think our kids in school would love to celebrate what we do well so we can show them this is how you make society even better. Invest your talents in society to make it even better. Woe is me doesn't get you very far, but what can I do with the talents that God has given me uh, will get you very far in living a fulfilling, effective life. Any school's core values would include learning. We hope so. Um, I think sometimes uh, in some school cultures, they can become so toxic. Uh, there can be students who create unrest so often. There could be teachers who are unhappy, as Todd mentioned this morning. Um, little cabals where staff actually form little cliques and and uh, I heard of something with one of my students in one of my grad classes uh, about a year or so ago that uh, a big issue in the school was the leadership team had formed a clique. They were having lunch inside their offices and not out around the building, uh, mingling with people the way they should and making decisions uh, that really was not in the best interest of the staff or at least didn't have staff input. So it's easy to become part of a clique, not just students. Um, adults can do that. The uh, PTA parents can do that. The coaching staff can do that. Uh, and that takes away from this centerpiece that all you really have to have to have schooling is one mentor and one mentee. And when we uh, find ourselves being pushed further and further and further away from that, then the school is not always focused on learning as it should be, even though that's hard to believe. Next slide. And we'll just slide right through this one because the research says that one of the secrets to a, a um, meaningful life at the end of the day is fulfilling work. So as the school leader, if you are uh, promoting and helping and investing and shepherding and training and coaching, same way teachers with students, fulfilling work all around the building, you've got a great school. Don't care if your test scores aren't where they need to be. If folks are doing fulfilling, meaningful work, you have, you're right in the center of where you need to be. And those test scores will come later. Balance. Are you focusing uh, with your staff in staff meetings, different times during the year, emphasizing folks go home and leave it here. I talked to somebody yesterday, uh, my class last night, training future superintendents. And uh, this is one of those type A driven, very successful educators. And she said, I actually took yesterday off. We had a three day weekend, Martin Luther King day, Monday, I stayed away from work. We need to be reminding ourselves that we do better work when we have rested and renewed and not just a gerbil on a wheel to where we run down and burn out. So balance is key, same way for your kids. I hope you have teachers in your building that have policies where when it's possible, they don't give kids homework on weekends or they have other ways, uh, don't pile too much homework on, period. Um, there's other ways to be effective uh, besides every night kids taking another two hours home after they've already spent counting their bus time uh, eight or nine hours with school. Next slide. Do you make time to dance in your building? We talked about that a little bit earlier, the celebrations, but in your own life, uh, you may be uh, a rock star in your district, maybe all across the state. I hope you're taking vacations. I hope you're cultivating your personal hobbies. Uh, I hope you uh, are doing that in terms of modeling for your staff. I hope you celebrate uh, making time to dance with your staff and with your students. Um, students need to know that part of life is to dance and not just uh, figuratively, obviously, but um, um, in various areas of our life. Students, uh, my last school was a Blue Ribbon School, and that was because of a wonderful staff, wonderful family resource center, wonderful parent involvement. Uh, it was a blue collar school and a good sign that the teachers were doing things well. Uh, my fourth and fifth grade teachers, when the buses would roll out of the parking lot on the last day of school in late spring, uh, I would see students hanging out the windows, crying and waving by to their 
fifth grade teachers as they were going to the middle school the next year. Now, there were a lot of other ways we could have measured the pulse and the health of that school, but that reminded me these teachers get it. If they have created those type of relationships with these kids who now are at that age where it's cool to be middle school and they are uh, grieving, leaving this environment, this culture, elementary culture, we have done something right. Next slide. Just a couple to go here. Community over and over and over again. Um, that would be a healthy core value if you listed three to five that that are explicitly decided on by staff, surely healthy communities is in the middle of that. Students and staff should not be coming to work like they're working in a factory, uh, dreading getting up in the morning and going and then celebrating every evening when they get home and then praying that the weekend is extended. Um, if you have teachers, if you're a school administrator and you have a teacher who's doing that and she just consistently or he consistently says, I, I've just hit the wall, I've just burned out, I just can't stand it anymore. As we shared earlier, earlier this morning, uh, shepherd and provide support and maybe they need to be moved to another assignment, but perhaps they're saying, I really do need to step away from this profession. I've given all I can give. Um, so all of us need to feel community when we are at work. People leave organizations, the research says, not because of all the perks, that we all fight for and concentrate on all the time. The state legislature in, is in session right now. And there'll be a lot of lobbying about more perks. You know what the research says about uh, why people leave organizations? They leave organizations because they don't feel appreciated. So whether you think it's cool or not cool, it is important to create a culture of care in your school for staff and students and parents, folks from central office, when they walk in the door, they should feel that community, a safe place, um, a school that is, a, is an incubator, uh, not a school that creates fear or sends mixed signals to visitors. Next slide. Life is so much more than me. Folks, if you can teach that to your students when they're in your building and when they exit and go to the next school, they are more mature. Oh my goodness. Uh, the future looks bright in this society. If we don't do that, the future doesn't look so bright, does it? As our current last couple of generations have proven to ourselves that we really can get off track when uh, the focus is, is about me all the time. Next slide. How do we invest in others? A core value, investing in others. Uh, whether it's helping kids in a volunteer uh, summer or after school uh, club or sports program, or whether it's being uh, an individual and a school that lets uh, the senior citizens in the, in the community know that they are welcome and that they are cared for individually and collectively, uh, how do we invest in others? How does the school promote that and practice that? Next slide. Robert Greenleaf, the father of servant leadership over the last 50 years, he introduced this to our culture when he was working at AT&T and now he's studied all over the world. The servant leader is servant first. It begins with a natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first, as opposed to wanting power, influence, fame, or wealth. So when you school councils are hiring your next principal, you're not going to be wanting to hire someone who is about uh, um, power, influence, fame, and wealth. You want to hire someone who is there to serve for the right reasons. We do have a couple of minutes left. I think there might be one more slide, Bruce. Maybe that's it. Okay. Okay. From Stephen Covey, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Here's another trail camera picture of a beautiful coyote. Automatically, some people will look at that and say, oh, get a gun. I want to shoot that wild animal. Other people look at that and say, look at the natural beauty in that animal. So a lot of times, if we will listen to others, we will find out so much about them that's positive. Uh, the research says more listening, less talking in the classroom, in group situations, and we have uh, made such a difference by listening authentically to the other person. Is that my last slide, Brooke? And for what shall profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? So back to the first slide, John Maxwell talking about core values are your very soul. Any quick questions before we go? Y'all been a 
very attentive group. Thanks to Brooke for running my slides for me. That was wonderful. <laughs> uh, you always want to have a plan B, folks. You take technology right. out sometimes, or you forget to have your slide deck loaded. You know, with, with so many presentations, it's hard to keep everything sorted anymore. <laughs> um, we're right at time, but um, you did have one comment just thanking you um, okay. and appreciating all that you do from Rindy. Okay. Well, I have seen several folks in um, Ed Camp today that I've worked with over the years. And again, to Brooke, uh, Brooke probably knows or remembers uh, Stu Silverman from Pritchard Committee work a few years ago. Great, great man. Yeah, he really was. Brooke, thanks for hosting, Brooke, and thanks to all of y'all. And there's other great sessions going on yeah, all day think, long, so enjoy guys, them. I think we've got, um, hold on, let me check to verify. Let's see, we're done until, oh, we've got a whole 10 minutes. 1040, we'll be back in um, Better Together session with John Akers. So yeah. um, see you guys in 10 minutes. And That'll maybe. be a great one too. Thank you all. Have a great Bye day.